And uh, welcome to Aspects of Japanese Studies. I am Junko Habu, the chair of the Center for Japanese Studies, or CJS, and I am the host of today's show. Aspects of Japanese Studies is a talk series that showcases the research being conducted by faculty, graduate students, visiting scholars, and alumni of the CJS. Each speaker will present a casual 15 minute talk on her or his ongoing project or key research topics in the field of Japanese studies. Today, I am delighted to introduce Jihye Kim, a visiting student at CJS from Osaka University. Jihye conducts comprehensive analysis of Kabuki during the Meiji period, the late 19th century, her research foresight includes nostalgia to Edo cultures, modernization in compliance with the theater reform movement, and uh, canonization against the trend of modernization. The title of her presentation today is The Evolution of Kabuki to the Traditional Performing Arts. Kim san, please. Oh. Thank you. Um, thank you for introducing me, Professor Havu. And uh, um, I, I share my PowerPoint first. Mm. Then let's start my presentation. Um, again, thank you for coming. And um, it is an honor to share my research here. And I'd like to thank Professor Habu and Kumi Sang and other CJ staff for giving me such a great opportunity. Actually, I'm planning to submit my doctoral dissertation this year, and its topic is to trace the history of Kabuki from the early mage period to the 1900, focusing on three aspects: nostalgia for agriculture in the play, and modernization and canonization process of Kabuki. Based on part of my dissertation, today I'm going to address the reformation and canonization phenomena of Kabuki in the Meiji period. As you may know, Kabuki is one of Japanese classical theater, which originated in the early 17th century and was inscribed on the list of UNESCO Cultural Heritage acknowledged for its symbolism of mass culture in the Edo period, as well as its long and cherished history. But of course, Kabuki was not initially a traditional theater. It was still considered to be a contemporary performing art until the middle of the Meiji era. After the Meiji restoration of 1868, Kabuki was transformed by adapting novel elements of the new era and became a target of reformation. However, Kabuki was forced to admit its limitations and renounce its attempts to reform in the face of its successive failures and the emergence of new modern plays. In other words, the 1890s to the 1900s was a transitional period when Kabuki switched from being a contemporary dramatic form to becoming a traditional theater. I think exploring what happened during this time is valuable for considering the path of modern, Jap uh, modern Kabuki's history. Also, the canonization process of Kabuki can be connected with the revaluation of other culture in the Meiji period. So, in this presentation, I mainly focus on the reformation of Kabuki script by literacy and conservative movements of the Kabuki industry as a counter to the reformation. To the end, let's take a look at the inauguration of Engeki Kaidogai or Theater Reform Society. Although there were some attempts to revise Kabuki in a modern way after the major restoration, it was not until Engeki Kaidogai was founded in 8086 that theater reforms were extensively discussed by influential figures. Uh, here is a quotation from the article reporting the inauguration of Kaidogai 
and we can find some renowned names of government officials as founders or advocates, uh, such as Inoue Kaoru, here, Inoue Kaoru, Mori Arinori, or industrialist Shibusa Aichi, or politician Ito Hirobumi and Okuma Shigenobu, and so forth. Also, as you can see in the highlighted part, the most crucial aim of Kaido Gai was to correct old fashioned customs of traditional performances and to create elegant and refined one. Uh, here, it is important to note that even though Engeki refers to theater or drama in general in Japanese, people engaged in Kaido Gai use this term to mean specifically kabuki performances. This is because they consider kabuki as the only Japanese place equivalent to the concept of the theater in the West. It is said that the establishment of Kaido Gai was supported by Ito Hirobumi and Inoue Kaoru, who, who were immersed in modernization in order to amend the unequal treaties with Western countries. They believe that thorough modernization contribute to showing that Japan had an equivalent cultural level with other developed countries. Therefore, the reformation of Kabuki was implemented as part of their diplomatic strategy. As a result, Kaido Gai wanted to reform Kabuki on the basis of Western theater style. According to Engi Kaido Iken, a publication based on the commemorative speech for the launching of Kaido Gai, the group insists that unusual and outdated characteristics of kabuki, such as onagata, which means male actors who play female roles, and hanamichi, an extra stage that runs through the audience, and chobo, musical narratives, and the background, such things are needed to be eliminated in pursuit of a more universal style of performance. However, this kind of opinions was too biased toward Westernization and almost impracticable for maintaining the form of Kabuki itself so that it received severe criticism from some literati. Furthermore, there is a dissatisfaction with Kaido Kai's policy challenged them to reform Kabuki script. For instance, Fukuchi Ochi and Tsubochi Shoyo were pioneers who tried to create play script for the Reformation based on their own philosophy. In my next section, I'd like to discuss the experimental plays written by Ochi and Shoyo. To begin with, Fukuchi Ochi was a journalist at Tokyo Nichin Shimbun in the early Mage period, and he became a playwright in residence for the Kabukiza Theater from 1889 after resigning from the newspaper. Actually, Ochi was one of the founder of Kaido Gai, but compared to other members who blindly, blindly pursue Western style, Ochi had a high degree of comprehension of Kabuki, and he took a more flexible stance to take advantage of both Japanese and Western theater in terms of playwriting. In an effort to do this, Ochi used the method of reforming previous historical plays. For example, Junidoki Kaike Soga, based upon uh, Soga Kaike Zan by Chikamatsu, was one of his efforts at the reformation of Kabuki script. There are two points I want to address about Ochi's recreation of Chikamatsu's play. First, Ochi changed some monologues in the original play to a conversation among several characters. This modification resulted from his intention to avoid the frequent use of monologues, which is very common in Japanese traditional plays. According to Kawataki Tsushio, a researcher of comparative theatrical studies, one of the distinctive features of Japanese play is literary narrations, 
that give more focus on sketching certain circumstances and the overall drama. On the other hand, Western plays tend to use dialogues to depict emotions of characters, and even when using monologues, they concentrate on individual rather than surroundings. Given this perspective, it is likely that Oche tried to adapt the advantage of Western theater in his play. At the same time, Ochi made full use of Chobo, the background musical narratives that further describe the behavior or emotion of characters. Even though Kaido Gai judged that Chobo is an unnecessary tradition, Ochi evaluated it as a virtue of Kabuki and he incorporated Chobo in his play. Meanwhile, Tsubochi Shoyo also strived to write innovative kabuki script. However, unlike Ochi, Shoyo did not belong to the theater, so he published his first kabuki script, Kirihitoha, in the magazine Waseda Bungaku while working as an educator. In Kirihitoha, Shoyo endeavored to revise the stylized forms of kabuki's historical plays. In regard to the setting of character's personality, the main character, Katakiri Katsumoto, is described as ambiguous and unfathomable in every single scene, and his daughter, Kagiro, is entrapped by a villain and put her father in danger due to her care careless behavior. Considering that male and female protagonists typifies heretic samurai and wise and faithful ladies in the historical play, Katsumoto and Kagero are totally at odds with existing stereotypes. In addition, Shoyo devised a new sort of dream scene in which a female character Yodogimi struggles with evil spirits who bear a grudge against her and the story in the dream flows in a very illogical and irrational manner. On this point, Shoyo criticized that every dream in traditional kabuki is not a genuine dream, but instead a foreshadowing of the drama, which means the dream is always intentional and nothing but a device rather than being natural. To resolve this, Shoyo tried to create a realistic and pure dream without a theatrical strategy in the scene of Yodogimi's nightmare. Along with the reformation of Kabuki script, we can also find conservative movements in the Kabuki industry from the 80s-90s. Even though the Kabuki actor like Ichikawa Danjuro the ninth create a new genre called Katsureki Mono to revise historical play through the 1880s. Most of them were not successful and eventually Danjuro became skeptical of kabuki reforms. Furthermore, around this time, societal enthusiasm for westernization diminished due to the failure of Ito and Inoue's politics and the impact of the activity of Kaido Gai receded. Under these circumstances, the kabuki industry, including Danjuro, realized that it was more effective for the survivor of kabuki to reframe it as a tradition instead of reforming it. I think that these Three examples can be interpreted as the groundwork for the canonization process of Kabuki. First of all, Danjuro commits himself to restaging old masterpieces in the Edo period while minimizing his new experimental performances. Moreover, he began to monopolize Kanjinchu, the most popular and prestigious play in the Ichikawa family. So Danjuro, um, so Danjuro expelled his student who performed Kanjincho in a provincial tour without his permission and fired the suit against the publication of the plagiarized script of Kanjincho. Second, Danjuro completed the Kabuki Ju Hachibang project 
on 18 play collections of, uh, of the Ichikawa family's representative repertoire launched by his father. And also he assembled new plays performed by himself called Shin Kabuki Ju Hachibang. Similarly, Onoe Kikogoro V compiled Shinko Engeki Jishu, a collection of 10 plays displaying the Onoe family's acting style, which was intended to counter Danjuro's collections. The third example is the preference of Matsubami Mono, which means dance plays adapted from No and Kilgan. This was one way of situating kabuki as a tradition by relying on the authority of the previous canon. Indeed, several Matsubami Mono plays are included in Danjuro's and Kikugoro's collection, such as Sunabenke, Kagami Jishi, Tsuchiguromo, and so forth. Uh, in conclusion, today I examine kabuki reforms from the late 8080s focusing on the inauguration of Kaidokai, as well as the experimental kabuki playwriting by Fukuchi Ochi and Tsubochi Shoyo. At the same time, there were conservative movements to canonize kabuki's play by central figure like Danjuro and Kikogoro. I assume that they found that opinions suggested by Kaidokai and other intellectuals were unrealizable and ignored Kabuki's intrinsic value. Consequently, the entire Kabuki industry realized that it would be hard to maintain Kabuki as a contemporary theater at some point. And as a starter, Danjuro and Kikogoro tried to differentiate and privilege their family work by monopolizing certain plays or positioning them as special collections. Also, they utilize previous canon like No and Kyogen with the intention to raise the stature of Kabuki. After the death of Danjuro and Kikogoro in 1903, this trend of canonization became stronger and tribute performances for the two actors continue with very few attempts at Kabuki reforms. Thereafter, Kabuki was crystallized as a traditional theater form and recognized solely as a piece of Japanese heritage after the post-war period. Um, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs>